This third generation Chinese American comedian tries to order dim sum in her broken Cantonese and it is going viral. Yeah, let's run the clip from Christina Wong. All right, got my list, my cheat sheet. I'm gonna do this. I've been rehearsing all yesterday, this morning. I'm gonna, I wanna order dim sum in Cantonese and not get yelled at. Here we go, here we go. Dai, um, Dai, you know, uh, Yi Sat Mm Deep. Yeah, yeah, order. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. 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 So we she has a steamer already. So. Okay, so we let that that's it then? I think that's okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if she's gonna slam the money or not. Let's see if she slams it. That one that went better than anticipated, but we're now we're gonna try to do this again. Then yao um Uh Yeah, we did it. We ordered minimal humiliation. <laughs> we did it, huh, mommy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so emotional. It was so emotional. Oh my goodness. I can uh, relate. I can relate. It really takes me back to when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old and I had to take the phone calls overseas, you know? And uh, it's just like you're hiding behind couches. You're feeling embarrassed, bashful, ashamed, and you don't even know why. And I will say this, this is kind of like a hard video to watch in some ways, not really just because the Cantonese is so bad, but it's like, it encapsulates something real. And I think that that's why it's going viral. Yeah, is this something that embarrasses you in using your mother tongue? Also, Cantonese is one of those dialects that is extremely popular, but is kind of slowly, I wanna say dying out. Right, because you can't really learn it in school. Obviously, a lot of high schools yeah. nowadays in 2024 offer Mandarin even in high school. Right, right, right. So anyways, guys, we're uh, gonna cover this all, give you our own perspective, being, uh, you know, some Cantonese Americans ourselves. Please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Bob Boys, and also check out Smala Sauce. This is easy to say, David. You'll have no trouble saying Smala. If you wanna say it with the tones, Smala. And not only that, if you are Cantonese, or even if you're Toy San, Andrew, this is not too spicy. It's gonna be flavorful, a flavor Ooh. enhancer. Ooh. Um. Anyway, guys, yeah, so she's third generation Chinese American. Does that automatically excuse her canto? Because she's from like the San Francisco area where there's a lot of third, fourth, fifth, even sixth generation people enter from the gold rush days. It is a different situation, right? It's, if you're second gen, the onus is on you to speak your parents' mother tongue way better than if your parents are from America and you're learning your grandparents' mother tongue. Right, right, right. I would say, you know, I don't want to judge her because my Cantonese is not very good. Better than this, though. But it is better than this and i would say considering she grew up in sf and she's cantonese i, I would have expected a little bit better but it is also third gen though third it's also gen. funny yeah you're right she's third generation so um uh so maybe she, obviously her parents spoke to her in english growing up but i guess david my opinion is what i loved about this video is that christina went and did it she went and did it and she struggled through it and you should always struggle through it. Why not? It is fun. If you're going to Chinatown and Chinatown, let's say is your enclave, right? It speaks a lot of Cantonese, Mandarin, Toy San, right? Other slightly different dialects. Well, I would say the Fujinese. primary d dialects, I mean, it's changing now, but would be Toy San and Cantonese. Toy San is considered a sub-dialect right, of right, Cantonese, right, right. even though it's debatable. And, and you should just do it. You know why? Because you're Asian American, you got to grow thick skin, have fun with it. It's not that big of a deal. I think restaurant workers shame you a lot less nowadays. Oh, I used to get shamed way more like eight years ago trying to speak it. Nowadays, I think people understand what you're trying to do. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're trying to struggle through it. Okay, just keep going. What? Yeah, you and, are trying to connect with some yeah. sort of identity yeah. that maybe and, you are wrestling with. And it just shows that you respect the culture, that you still want to try. Even if that's the only time you try that week, you're at least trying because you know what? You're not an NPC. You, are, you get to be no. a main character and you get to take up the waiter's time and they have to talk to you in that dialect. Well, well not only that, they're paid by you. So you're gonna, gonna be tip them. they be like, "Ding guy, like Zhongman, come chala." That that would be like, why would you? Why would right, you say right. That? No, I did used to hear that back in the day, but I feel like nowadays 
the workers are just happy that you're trying. Uh, Andrew, you had an experience the other day. You were in Chinatown, and yeah. you went to a tailor. A tailor. I went to, uh, shout out to Miss Chen's tailor, you know, FJ lady. Um, but she only speaks Mandarin. And her English. And well, Fujinese, too. Yeah, right? Fujinese, sorry. Fujinese, Mandarin, and, and barely English. But I thought I, I thought I was hoping she would speak more English because I could understand her English. So I said, hey, your English is okay. Right, so you're, you, originally, you're starting off in Mandarin. Yeah, actually, I'm trying to see if she can speak English because I know she speaks a little bit, right? But she's just like, you know, this is essentially the conversation in Chinese. She's like, no, 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 my English is not good, so I just speak in Chinese. And I was like, all right, fine. And it was like, it was taking a lot longer to figure out because you're like talking about tailoring and the prices. And like, I pretty much got most of what she was saying. Right, kuzi. Yeah, kuzi is smaller, larger, da, 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 you know, jin, han jin, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, the, the words I know. And uh, it was embarrassing, but honestly, I walked away from it. I was like feeling, even though I had to bust out Google Translate once on the app, uh, <laughs> I was still grateful for the opportunity. I thought Miss Chen was very nice. She was very forgiving. Do you think she appreciated that you were struggling through with, with pretty bad Mandarin, but you, you got through it? I think they're okay with it. I think they're okay Do with it. Do you think that this extreme shame is really more typified of the 40 year old generations and up where they're like, they're so ashamed, but they're also not doing, I guess in a way the work to yeah, learn it. Yeah. Like, is that a weird combo to be so ashamed of something, but not ashamed or feel enough incentive to go and learn just, Chinese. Right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to tell people, man, you're not the only one that sucks at your mother tongue. You're not the only one that sucks and you're not the only one that sucks and is trying in public. So just do it. And be confident because this is part of, if we are, do not have thick skin as Asian Americans, none of our cult culture will continue. None of it. It will not continue. Right, because it's going to be a clunky transition because we're yeah. not like the embodiment of Because then you don't want to say Asiaticness. Chinese New Year's coming up. Oh, if you're so bashful, then don't say Gong Si Fa Tai. Don't say Gong Hei Fa Choi. Like no, don't. I, I always don't. I don't really like it when ABCs on say Happy Lunar New Year. I'm like, Oh, man, I would not say that. Yeah, just say it if you know how to say it. It's all good. Just you don't do got to say necessarily. Ever, just say Kung Hei Fa Chui. You don't got to say Sin Tai Ki Nong, Man Chui Yi. If you own anything in this life, you got to own up to your culture that you're born into. All right, how much of it is it that this older generation really missed out on the TikTok, the YouTubes, and the Instagrams? Because you know how you could follow all these, like, you could follow, follow subtle Canto traits on Instagram. There's a whole Cantonese subreddit that'll teach you all these interesting things. You can open up CN Hoopers and watch all these guys, like, beat all these white and black guys at one-on-one. -on -one. I'm saying the 40-year-olds, they never saw any of sure, it. Sure, sure. Everybody's got excuses. Sure. Everybody's got excuses, don't they? Right. Nowadays, I guess it is true that you can open up an AI meme, Amber. You could see internal affairs dubbed over. They're drinking a boba. They're doing that Heidi Lau dance or whatever, you know. And uh, You know what, David? I've been... You know how you can bomb as a comedian? You bomb a set, right? It means you're not doing well when you do comedy. And it is cringy. When I've I, been bombing Chinese for a decade. You've been Joe Coying at the at the. I've been bombing. Yeah. So to me, I got thick skin now, and I'm confident, and at least what I know, and I know I might bomb again. But you know what? That's somewhat comforting. Hey, hey Andrew, bombs away. Yeah, bombs away. Um, yeah, I just always tell people, don't live like it's 1995. Here, I'm going to run two clips of interesting Cantonese-type material from Reddit. I don't know what makes my Cantonese so distinctly Vietnamese to other people's ears. I know exactly what she's talking about because my family is also Chinese Vietnamese. After being exposed to so many Chinese Vietnamese people in my life, I've picked up on a few key differences between the Cantonese spoken by people who are in China and Hong Kong versus those who live in Vietnam. Mind you, this is just my observation from my experience and it might not apply to every Chinese Vietnamese person. So feel free to add on if you notice any other differences. But key difference number one, Chinese Vietnamese people tend to emphasize the uptone when they speak Cantonese and this mimics how it sounds in Vietnamese. A few examples include fish, ga, banana, chui, baby, be. So in Cantonese, to go home, you would say, fan okay. But Chinese Vietnamese people would say, Fine, okay. Fine, okay. Hear the difference? Fine, okay. Fine, okay. And speaking of that, it leads me to key difference number two. Chinese Vietnamese people have different phrasing. Let's use the same example. Fine, okay. Chinese Vietnamese people would also say, Fine, te. 
I have only heard Chinese Vietnamese people use that phrase. If you say fan xe to anyone who is from Guangzhou or Hong Kong, they will look at you funny. Speaking from experience. Key difference number three. Chinese Vietnamese people have a hard time pronouncing the ưng ending of Cantonese words. For example, to take a shower, it's chong leung. But that's too much of a strain for Vietnamese people to say. Instead, they would say something like so long or some variation of that. Another example is Hong Kong. Hong Kong versus Hong Kong. Key difference number four. Chinese Vietnamese people have different syntax or sentence structure. And this structure mimics Vietnamese. For example, in Vietnamese, if you want to ask somebody if they want something, you always add the word kong at the end of the sentence. Like, do you want to eat? An kong. Kong means no. So it literally translates to eat, no. When you want to ask the same thing in Cantonese, you have to say sick, m sick. And that literally translates to eat or not eat. But Chinese Vietnamese people would say sick mo. Mo in Cantonese means no. So sick mo, an kong. Same structure. Instead of saying sick m sick, they would say sick mo. Do you like it in Cantonese? Zhong m zhong yi. And Chinese Vietnamese people would say zhong yi mo, mimicking the thích kong in Vietnamese. And key difference number five, different particles. Particles are words that can't stand alone, but they are added to sentences to give it meaning. The phrase really translates to hai me in Cantonese, me being the particle. In Chinese Vietnamese, people might say something like hai mo and six, different pronunciation. To say that's mine in Cantonese, you would say hai ngo ke. Chinese Vietnamese people would say hai ngo ga, ga instead of ke. So overall, Chinese Vietnamese people speak Cantonese in a harsher sounding way. Do you agree? What do you think? Most work language in the world. What's your pronoun? What pronoun? Like, in your language, how do people address you? Kento. Pronoun. Kai. How do you say he? Kai. She. Kai. Non binary. Kai. Gender neutral. Kai. Transgender. Kai. Gender fluid. Kai. So everyone is Koi? Yes, ah, and also Koi, 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 and also these are Koi. These aren't even living things. You don't believe me, ah? Lost your Koi, sick your Koi. All right, Andrew, let's just get into the comments section. Um, somebody just said, man, I love this as an ABC who struggles with Cantonese. It's just good to see you don't have to sound perfect. You just have to try. But mm. other people were like, oh, my goodness, I was getting secondhand panic through the screen just listening to her. And other people said, oh, my goodness, you hurt my ears with your horrific Cantonese. Um, yeah, everybody has different reactions to things. But like you said, how, how did you work over that shame to the point where you just like you just did it? I just had fun with it, man. You got to make it fun. If it's not fun, you're just not going to do it. Right. Hey, the comedians that really get through bombing, Andrew, they're the ones where they almost start to enjoy bombing. Yeah, you got to just take it. You got to take it, man. Um, somebody said, yep, when you practice Cantonese and then you get hit with straight Toy San because the lady answers her originally in Hoi San Va. Hoi San Va, Andrew, there was a lot of debate. Is Toy San a dialect? of Cantonese or is it a different language? There was a debate. Know. I don't know. Is it? Uh, someone ask a linguist. It, it's, actually, it's actually a gray area. Because it's pretty similar to Canto, but it sounds a little different. But if you only speak Toy San and you speak it really fast, it's true somebody from Hong Kong is going to struggle to understand you. Even though they might get the general meaning, all the details might be wrong. Um, somebody Perhaps said, it's a dialect. Why don't you just watch more Canto films with the subs on? This is how you do it. Um, I, here's the thing about watching films, man. If they're talking about some complex stuff, I realize you got to watch a ton of it for you to absorb it because you're not, they don't speak the way you're going to speak. Right, right, right. TV shows even more regular. Like, like, movies tend to be very like contextual to like an era or like a formality. There, there's just, I would say there's a lot of the Instagram pages do a great job of telling you quick, easy phrases that you're going to use in everyday life. So mm. for example, like, let's just play this one about how Kerr. They, they say in Cantonese, curry is used for everything, so that's why it's so woke. It's like a pronoun. Yeah, lady, it's an, every, boy, All pronouns. Curry, 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 curry. Um, for me, I think a b good way, at least for like a younger guy, would be like listening to PG1 if you want to learn Mandarin. Andrew has like a very New York style of rapping, but in Mandarin, mm. JB is a half Filipino, half HK rapper. And uh, here's a clip of us rapping in Mandarin. 
not your average ABC. We had a show on TV. No need for the KTVs, cause I do the damn thing, regardless of the time zone. Accomplish anything that I put my mind on. Make it happen even in the no fly zone. You just try to keep a charge on your iPhone. Whoa. Somebody said, oh my goodness, I can't believe she really tipped him five cents. Cause I guess she only tipped him five cents in the video for the takeout dim sum. Oh, well, if she's taken out, but yeah, I guess five cents is, you might as well, you either tip them like 50 cents or you tip them nothing. She really is old school, man. That's, that's pretty that's funny. That's true old school SF Cantonese toy needs to be honest. Um, somebody said they're not yelling. That's just how we talk when we're in our own spaces. So this was a lot of discussion about like, why does it seem like she's like barking at her? But mm -hmm. well, she's like, they ah, mm deep, ha cow. No. You know what I mean? Um, I'll say this. I think a lot of Cantonese sounds like yelling, but I actually don't think it's all Cantonese. I don't think you have to, you don't have to yell to speak Cantonese. I don't think that's true. That's a stereotype. That's like saying, oh, you, that, like, you're not talking like this. You're not like this type of, it's, right. it's just a I probability thing. I don't feel thing. angry. I don't, I don't, I, I don't like agree that. with that. Okay. Um, somebody said, if they want to get mad, screw them. I don't care. I just want to speak English. Why don't you guys adapt or go back, huh? This was from an ABC Andrew who was clearly mad at having the feeling the need to speak Chinese to other Chinese immigrants. So, yeah, this guy said, you know, I got discriminated by Canto speakers as somebody who only speaks Mandarin when I was growing up deep in the Cantonese zone. And I was just like, listen, guys, this whole beef stuff, it's like, it depends on how deep in those worlds you grow up. But, yeah, I get it. Some people live their life in, like, tiny fishbowls across, like, three streets in a city. Right, right, Like, right. they're not even living in the entire city. Um, somebody said, you know, I lost my ability to speak Chinese and Vietnamese as I got older. Some people are saying reclaim it. Some people are saying it doesn't matter for modern life. Mm. Because why would you need to if... Because people were saying, all right, why does this lady, Christina Wong, feel so ashamed, but the only thing she's ordering is food? She's not, like, lean learning any philosophies or deeper knowledge. What is the point of people connecting with their parents or grandparents' local dialect? Well, maybe you feel like uh, maybe Christina has feels like that she hasn't done enough in her life to be proud of being Chinese or, or hasn't Canto, right? whatever hasn't done enough for the culture, or now she finally realizes that Cantonese is uh, the number of Cantonese speakers and dwindling. Right, Cantonese schools is dwindling. So yeah, I mean, whatever the incentive is. Um, but is it I true that to get high level success in America, she'll never need to know? No, no, no. Of course, I mean, high level of success, just be white. Why? That's the only you thing you need white, to do. Right. Yeah, be just, white passing in your mannerisms, yeah. uh, particularly a rich no. white person is really beneficial. Make your hair acting. brown and, or something blonde, like, and they just be white. I guess that would have, you would put yourself in the high, the best position to achieve. But you know, you got to do things for the culture. And again, you got to own up to your culture because if you don't own a house, you don't own anything else in this world. What do you got? You got the culture you were born into. So you got to own up to it. And plus, I do think all these little like embarrassing moments in your life, they build up to make you stronger. Mm. So you are saying that is it, is it to communicate? Yeah, I, I would say, I think for some people, they would need to answer the question. Is it to communicate with what's considered like your motherland tribe, your Lao Jia? You know what I mean? Like where you trace your ancestors back to that specific village. Mm -hmm. Then maybe she should speak Toisan instead of Kanto. Some people were in the comments were like, yeah, learn Toisan Va to maintain that. But it's like, that's already vanishing. Kanto's already vanishing in relation <coughs> yeah, to Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. If she wants to really be on the good side of these Toisan people, go learn some Toisan and let them know that a third generation Toisan girl is learning Toisanese. And that would be even more impressive. You know, yeah, they would probably be like, really feel uh, some sort of heck connection. Heck fine, whole heck, you know. Uh, do, was it Dolce? Dolce? I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. think that's it. Yeah, something like that. See, <laughs> I know a few. <laughs> anyway, guys, let us know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Like I said, I feel like the 40 year olds, they relate to it so much. But you know what's different about the people younger, Andrew? They got exposed to a lot more content because you can follow like learn Canto from this 20 year old kid who was like really goofy right, 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 right now right. on Instagram. And you can see that content on your algorithm every day. Right, right, So right. I just think that for the 40 year olds, I guess what I would say out there is go to TikTok, go to Instagram, go to Reddit, follow whoever you need to follow, stream whatever scenes you need to stream online because definitely like it's a real video, but it's hope, it's, it's a place that I would hope a lot of Asian Americans will not need to be moving forward. Right. All and right, everybody, let us know. Should you keep struggling through with your mother tongue when you're ordering food? Should you always do it? My take is that you should go and try. 
Keep doing it. Have fun with it. Yes, there is a point where you are wasting everybody's time. I get that. But take it to that point. You paid for that experience. You paid for it. That's you paid for point. that experience. Well, you paid for it with money, and you also paid for it with your identity. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button. Check out Smala Sauce. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.